Hi, Dave Jack here with a uh, short video update. Uh, uh, three things to share with you quickly. One, uh, new VDH guidelines. We were anticipating new VDH guidelines on the heels of um, uh, the push at the state, federal level, local level uh, to get all students back sooner rather than later. Um, we, we all recognize that uh, the only way to make that possible is with more flexibility relative to six feet of social distancing that the CDC recommends. And I just want to reiterate again that that is a recommendation from the CDC. And they, and in the guide with the frustrations and the guidelines, they use language like when at all possible or by any means possible and language like that relative to the six feet. So most folks were interpreting that as, well, then there's flexibility, but it wasn't definitive flexibility. So the good news is VDH took that CDC, got those CDC guidelines. They um, are, created their own guidelines and provided more specific language relative to three feet of uh, uh, social distancing versus six feet. It's providing more uh, flexibility for us and a more concrete language relative to that, which is important. So look forward to that coming out sometime, hopefully today. I know the conferences, the news conferences at two. Um, next, I wanted to talk about Senate Bill 1303. Senate Bill 1303 is the bill um, that requires all students to be provided the face-to-face -face instructional option beginning July 1st. Uh, it doesn't have to begin July. The law goes into effect July 1st. But once school, what that means for us is once school starts, and for all localities, assuming the governor signs the bill, that we, we will all be returning back to school five days a week, face-to-face uh, -face with teachers. And um, the 990-hour requirement, seat time requirement, is back in play. So what that means is we're back uh, to a, sort of a normal schedule in the fall, uh, five days a week, face-to-face -face instruction with 990 hours with the 990 hours seat time requirement in place. Uh, we are also required to provide a virtual option uh, at that time. So we're working on that and we will, we should have a couple different options for parents uh, soon. So uh, that's that, but that's, we should be going to the governor's desk if, if it hasn't already to be signed into law. If you want to read more about it, you can go to, uh, um, the, the General Assembly's website and just look up Senate Bill 1303. Uh, last but not least, summer programming. Planning for a summer academy is in full swing uh, where we are going to be providing uh, two three-week sessions uh, beginning, I believe, June 7th. Um, now, the summer academy program is, is funded through CARES grant money. And um, the, the CARES grant money comes with strings attached. And the strings attached in this case are uh, the requirement that we local school divisions assess students, determine which students have experienced significant learning loss, and provide this learning opportunity for them in the summer, which is another way of saying it's not a typical summer school program that's sort of open to everyone. The, the CARES requirement, or also known as ESSER requirement, or ESSER grant, assessing students, determining what their needs are, determining who has um, experienced the greatest learning loss, and then getting in, them into summer school. So again, it's it's a little different. It's not your typical summer school opportunity open to everyone. I wanted to make sure that we're really clear about that. We'll be providing more information as that committee continues to do its work in preparation for our summer learning uh, academy. So I hope this information has been helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to contact, contact us directly. Thank you.